Good morning. Welcome to God Manifest. We got a lot of first timers here, so it's great to see some first timers. Um, man, God's been wrecking me all day long, all morning long. Um, I'm gonna do something not out of the ordinary, but God completely gave a new message during worship. Amen. So I have a scripture, and we'll see what God has after that. So let's. Uh, it's time for offerings. We, those of y'all who they support us, thank you for supporting us. We are a 501c3. So if you want to, you can give online at godmanifest.com forward slash donate, or you can give by check or any other way. Um, again, if you write by check, you just write God Manifest. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your love. Thank you for everything you do so that we can continue to do and support what God is doing. We had an interesting thing. Olivia wanted me to share this. So there's been a few instances in our life where we got feathers raining down. So yesterday we were at a conference out in um, Conroe, Texas on the way back off of 45. I'm on the phone talking to a minister friend of mine, Scott Windrum, and all of a sudden feathers were flying everywhere. A mile, mile and a half, maybe two miles of just white feathers. We were just driving through a sea of feathers, a cloud of feathers. Um, last time that happened, we were in Redding, California, driving out of the city to, to Sacramento, and we had feathers literally for six or seven miles, just feathers. It was like, it was like a, a, a angel having a pillow fight or something. Um, and then just over here in my house, in my backyard, I, had, I, I was building a fence, and I didn't see the feathers. My unsaved neighbor walked up, just walked up, and just looked around. And I had two of my friends there, my friend Jesus and friend Pedro were there, and, and I walked up to her and I went, "What's wrong?" And she goes. It's raining white feathers. I'm trying to see if there's a, is there a bird that got hit by her? I looked around and I said, I don't see the feathers. So I said, you see feathers now? She said, yeah, you don't see them everywhere. The, the whole yard's covered in feathers, she said. So it's so interesting when God does these mysteries. And that's what today's message is called. It's called mysteries. Um, well, God was giving me a prophetic word and then a prophetic song to sing over y'all. Maybe a little harder for the men to receive the song, um, but it's been ringing in my head all morning long. Uh, so God says, I see you, Cinderella. I see you. I hear you. I hear you. You are mine and I am yours. Know that I am good and you are forever mine. Earlier, we sang a song of our love to God. I love you, 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 God. I love you. We were just singing this song, this love song from us to him. And it's like sweet incense, right? As a parent, as a husband, as a wife, when, you're, when someone you love tells you that they love you, it's sweet incense to your soul and your heart. It lifts you up. And God's the same way. When he hears us sing this love song towards him, he comes alive. We touch him. We touch his heart. So if you all can close your eyes for a minute, I'm going to sing this song. I'm not a singer. But what God said was, when I said that to him, I said, I'm not a singer. And God said, you are a worshiper. Yes. And, you're, and the greatest form of worship you can give me today is your fearless yes. 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 So as I attempt to sing this song, I ask that you freely receive. And this is not a Christian song, y'all. Uh, and I... Luckily, it's not a rap song because I've never rapped in my life, but it's a, it's a song that God's been ringing and God said it's singing it over this congregation. Y'all ready for this? Yes. All right. You know the song, you can sing along. You, you may know this song. The first line changed. The first line originally said, they read you Cinderella, the Cinderella of the book. But God says, get ready, Cinderella. So that's the first line. God's changed the song. Close your eyes, relax, just sit in a position to receive. Get ready, Cinderella. You hoped it would come true. That one day a Prince Charming would come rescue you. You like romantic movies. You, you never will forget the way you felt when Romeo kissed Juliet. And all this time that you've been waiting. You don't have to wait no more. I can love you like that. I will make you my world. Move heaven and earth if you're my girl. 
I will give you my heart and give you all that you need. Show you your everything that's precious to me. If you give me a chance, I can love you like that. There's an invitation today. Man, I was sitting in the bathtub today and God started playing that song. And I, you know, I turned in my Google home and I said, play I Can Love You Like That from All For One. And God started playing it. And it was ministering to me. The song from my high school time was ministering to me. And God was saying, when he got his, God was saying, Cinderella, girl, he was talking to the bride of Christ. He's ministering to us with this song. He's, I didn't even know the line, I will move heaven and earth for you, was in the song. And so I heard the song again. It's been years since I heard the song. I must have not heard the song since my salvation in 2003. That's how long it's been. But what God is saying is, man, I can love you like that. I can love you like that. And where he had me end was, if you give me a chance, God says, if you give me a chance, I can love you like that. He just wants a chance to woo us. Right? He's a, he's a loving father trying to woo his son and daughters. And he's a loving God trying to woo those he created. And he's the bridegroom bringing flowers to his bride, singing a song over us. Now, are we able to receive God in all the, all the splendors and mysteries that he is, which makes us the bride, the son, and the creation? And the created. Can we become that? He has all these identities, but we are called, we are called sons and daughters and called saints at the same time. We are called, we are, we are called to co-reign with Christ and the Holy Spirit, to flow freely. I had a great conversation with a new friend of mine, and he said, How do you flow with the Holy Spirit? That's a great question. I start with yes. I start with yes. Obviously, I'm not a singer, but man, God is singing the song over us. Get ready, Cinderella. Get ready. Get ready. Who is Cinderella? The church. Yes, the church who's, who's it's been shunned, who's been put away, who's treated dirty, who's treated like a second, who's, who's, who's treated like a, an orphan child. We're not orphans. We're adopted. And we're not just adopted. We reign. During their worship, I kept on hearing, you reign, you reign, you reign. We sing that over God, and God says, yeah, I do. But I'm singing the same song over you. You reign, you reign, you reign. Yes. I have created you to reign with me. I have created you to create with me, to speak with me, to call, to call things that I have called to come to life, to come to life with me, through me, through my word and through my passion. I had no idea where God was heading with us today. I was thinking, God says, man, teach about my mysteries. And I was like, I don't know your mysteries. <laughs> um, and God says, here's a, here's a scripture, Col um, uh, uh, Colossians 1, 26 to 29, and I went, all right, give me more scriptures, because we're in church, right? <laughs> we're in church, I need more than one scripture to preach on, because I don't, I'm, I don't know if, if how people are going to receive one scripture, and God says, it's about my mysteries, it's about my mysteries, Colossians 1, 26 to 29, I'm reading from the Passion Translation, um, a good friend of ours is a, is the lead translator of this, uh, not a good friend, a friend of ours um, is the lead translator for this translations it says there is a divine there is a divine mystery a secret surprise that has been has been concealed from the world for generations but now it's being revealed unfolded and manifested for every holy believer to experience living within you is Christ who floods you with the expectation of glory this mystery of Christ Embedded within us becomes a heavenly treasure chest of hope filled with riches of glory for his people. And God wants everyone to know it. Christ is our message. 
We preach to awaken hearts and to bring every person into the full understanding of truth. And the truth will do what? Set you free, guys. It has become my inspiration and passion to, in ministry to labor with this tireless intensity, with the power flowing through me, through us, through you, to present to every believer the revelation of being his perfect one in Jesus Christ. Well, God was going to choose a uh, scripture to talk about his mysteries. That's mysterious. I was, we were just talking to Susie earlier, and I said, hey, you know, we teach dream interpretations here and prophecy here. And people used to ask me, how do you interpret dreams? I said, just like I interpret scripture. And they go, how? I asked the Holy Spirit. Right? There's, a, there's, there's scripture in context, which is powerful. And then there's scripture for you now. The same scripture will come alive when you say, what does this mean to me now? And God will begin to flood. Holy Spirit will flood through your hearts and renew your minds. Yeah. Only the Holy Spirit can renew your minds. Only the Holy Spirit can renew our minds. Only the Holy Spirit can renew our minds. And a lot of us think reading God's word will renew our minds. It, may, it can help us think. It can guide our way. But the Holy Spirit, with God's infallible written word, will renew our minds. It will wash over us. Right? So it says in Scripture, men, wash your bride with what? The Word. The Word. Now how many of us men are very good at washing our bride with the Word? I struggle with that. I struggle with that. But what Jesus was showing us is, do unto them as I have done to you. I wash you with my words, my written words, my spoken words. I'm alive and I'm real and I'm powerful, but I'm tender. And I was sitting there, I was overwhelmed while I was lying there in the bathtub. I'm not afraid to say I'm a man in the bathtub, right? I'm, I'm always overwhelmed in this bathtub. As God was saying to me, I want to ravish you with my love. I want to show you, I want to show my bride, the church, where she stands. And she stands next to me. I want, I want to empower my bride, my church. Man, I had no idea what was God was going with this. And it's it's blowing my mind. I love it. I love, I love this. Your greatest power comes through your greatest submission. Because who's more powerful when you're in a tough situation, God or you? So when you're in a tough situation, you said, hey, Lord, I submit. When God moves through you, I guarantee you, there's, you're endued with power. The original message I was going to teach on was about wheat and tares. God did give a message about wheat and tares. This sounds crazy. But God speaks in mysteries, right? So this is what God said to me yesterday during a meeting. Before the, the speaker started speaking about wheat and tares. I sat there, I leaned over to Olivia, and I said, spell tears? <laughs> I said, I think I'm spelling it wrong. Spell tears? She goes, T-A-R-E-S. And I'm like, okay, I spelled it wrong. <laughs> right? So I'm researching tears, researching the Darnell, which is a tear, which looks just like the wheat. I'm researching all this stuff. 15 minutes later, he starts talking about wheat and tears. And I was like, I looked up, got you, God. Got you. And God says, I said, what, what do you want to say about this? And God said, if the tares who are in the field that I sowed would bow down, I would transform them to wheat. So that's interesting, right? A, a tear looks exactly like wheat before it's ripe. When wheat ripens, it's ready for harvest, the seeds weigh probably twice as much and the heads bow. That's how you know the difference. The, the darnel, the tares, the seeds turn black. The good wheat turns brown, a dark brown. That's how, you know, that's how they, they can separate the wheat and tares. Now what God is saying there is, the tares were sown by the enemy. It says that in scripture. I've got a lot of theologians, a lot of uh, theologians here that are, that are biblically sound. They said, what are the tares? Those were sowed by the enemy in the middle of the night 
when I was sowing my, my, the good seeds, you and I, right? We were, we're the good seeds, right? We like to think that. But God says, hey, do you know how to know how gracious I am, how loving I am? Because I know that those tears that were sown are a spiritual tear, right? We're all creations. It's, we're, we're in a spiritual battle, not a physical, carnal battle. So it's hard for us to look at someone and say, hey, this person is evil. No, they're, they, they're doing things that are evil because they're afflicted by evil. Now, God is saying that if there's a part in your heart that says, Lord, I'm sorry for living wrong, preaching wrong, doing wrong. I'm sorry for potentially being a tear, being a Darnell. I bow down to you. God is promising you today. He will transform you to wheat and, he, and you will be part of the harvest. He, so the Darnell, the tear, gets thrown into the fire. It says that in scripture. Why? You know what the Darnell is? The Darnell is poisonous. A little Darnell gets you high. They said similar to like weed. A lot of Darnell will kill you. It's poisonous. Whereas real wheat, not like the, the, the GMO wheat we have now, the real natural wheat nourishes us. It fills us. It gives us strength. Darnell looks like wheat, acts like wheat, bakes like wheat. I think it smells and tastes just like wheat, but it poisons you. I think there's a warning God's telling us about a gospel that, that, that's not the pure gospel. A good friend of mine came over. He's actually going to speak on the 28th. He's from um, um, Belgium. Wait, Bulgaria. He's from Bulgaria, forgive me. Uh, Midgon Albina, Bulgaria. He's from Bulgaria. And I said, hey, what do you think of our preaching? He said, keep it pure. Keep it pure. Keep it pure. Because the pure gospel of Jesus Christ is good. Watch this video. And at the end of this video, I was getting kind of disturbed by this video. I'm not going to say the name. And then in the video, they said, people, they were coming against ministers. These ministers are preaching all the goodness of God, but they're not preaching about the bad news that they're going to hell. Jesus didn't say, preach the good and good news and bad news. It's the goodness of Christ that turns hearts to repentance. Right? And the bad news, some may need to hear. The goodness of God may not fully work on 100% of people. But the goal when you're out is to allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you as you minister to them. And the Holy Spirit is going to share about hell. Let him share about hell. The Holy Spirit is sharing about the goodness and love of God. Let him share about the goodness and love of God. And both are in love. Along this flowing through the Holy Spirit. You know, we're, we're called to be so pliable. That's what we're called clay, right? We're clay. He's the potter. Clay is pliable. And I guarantee you, if we can see each other as different clay things that God's creating, we all look different. Al and I look completely different probably in the spirit. Because God's creating you to be you in the spirit and me to be me. Susie to be Susie. Marie, Marie to be Marie. Right? We're all called to be different, but yet one. There is, there are, there's, a, there's a body of believers who don't believe. There's a body of believers that don't believe. I didn't know unbelief until I joined a church. I got saved. I was out there believing. I joined a church and they said, sit down and don't believe. Because you're not, there's no way you're doing these things in, 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 in the goodness of God, in the power of God. So I sat and I, and I shut up. And then later on when they went, oh, I think you're ready. Here's a microphone. And I was like, I don't think I'm ready anymore. And then when we got out and God said, start a church, I said, are you kidding me? I am not ready. I am not ready. And God said, that's the very reason why you're ready. It's, and that made sense. All of a sudden I said, you know what? Me, not be, me feeling like I'm not ready is me taking a meek stance. Right? And me saying, look, I can't do it. And God says, perfect, because I can't. I had a completely different message written. 
It was a lot longer than this. It, was, it had a lot more scripture than this. But what God wanted to do is the mysteries. The mysteries of God. If it doesn't conflict the written word, it's probably God if it's good. The written word is a foundation. The written word to me, it's, it's, it's my check. When I get a download from God, I stop. I either ask Olivia or I go, go Googling to find out and I research the Bible to find out, hey, am, am I hearing correctly? Is this conflicting God's character, God's nature in any way? Is this conflicting kingdom culture, right? You hear God talking parables all the time. Jesus talks in parables all the time. And he shares why as well, because he's sharing the mysteries. But it's also, he's, he's fulfilling a prophecy in Psalms. But the whole goal of God speaking in mysteries and what seems like riddles for the unsaved is so that the saved, the heart can arise, their spiritual ears can hear, and their spiritual eyes can see. And we seek the author of that parable, the author of the mysteries. I guarantee you God's been speaking some mysteries with y'all. And I'm telling you today, if you say, Father, what are you talking about? He'll share it. What do you mean? He'll share it. There are mysteries in the Bible. I know Alan here reads the Bible like, like a rabid dog, you know? You're hungry. You haven't eaten in a while and you're at a buffet, you know? And there's, there are things and scriptures in there that you, you probably read and went, don't quite understand that. I think it means this. And God says, if you ask Alan, I'll give it. I'll tell you this, the, the mystery and it's not what you think. It's so interesting. He's done that to me time and time again. I was sharing with Susie earlier when I got saved and the, the, the uh, Mormons handed me scripture and, and I, I read it out loud and I asked God what it meant and I defined it to the Mormons. They said, how'd you do that? I said, man, it's like the words come alive off the page. The words seem alive and they went, that was my first scripture I ever read. And she goes, oh, it says in scripture, it says that in scripture. It says what? And he goes, the, the word is alive. I'm like, that these written words are alive? They said, yes. And I went, show me. It's okay. It's okay to say that to God. Where does it say that? How am I supposed to pursue that? How am I, where, what part of me is not aligned? Because we're all part of a body. Our joints need to be in, in the right parts. Does that make sense? Our, and our head has to be Christ. One thing God said to me earlier on is, if you have two heads in a, in a body, you have a monster. I used to watch a lot of cartoons. I still do. but <laughs> So I see the cartoon monsters, the double head, triple heads, and I'm like, man, that's what Christ is talking about. Because uh, sometimes the dragons don't know which way to turn, when they're, like how to train a dragon, those three heads. One wants to head one way, one wants to head straight, one wants to turn left. And those are the things where with us, if we allow us to have multiple heads driving us, steering us, we're going to crash. We have one head, Jesus Christ. And we're filled with all of him and the Holy Spirit and all of God. It's amazing. Flowing with Christ is so amazing. Man, what I keep saying is a, it's a flag. Like a flag. Right? Things will never fall. When the wind is blowing, the flag moves with the wind. When God says rest, we rest. Some of us are trying to move when we're supposed to rest. Others are flowing. Our, our God's trying to get us to flow and we're trying to rest. We're trying to do other things. We're trying to do the opposite of what Christ, Christ is saying. Our goal as a believer is to say, what is your plan today? I'm writing some books. I have one book written. I have another book I finished. I just need to illustrate it. Uh, and I have, uh, I think, four other books I'm writing. And those, I'm not supposed to be a writer, you know, naturally, uh, but I'm a writer. It happened, because God. If God wants you to write, he'll make you a writer. If God wants you to speak, he'll make you a, he'll make you a speaker. 
God wants you to preach, he'll make you a preacher. God wants you to evangelize, he'll make you an evangelist. But in those situations, when apart from him guiding us, it says we're nothing. We're just a clanging symbol. But with them, man, we're an orchestra. So the Holy, the Holy Spirit, the angels hearken to God's, God's commands and God's, God's words. We're surrounded by angels. What if I told you that if you partner with Christ to find out what's on his heart and his mind right now and you speak it out, those angels are excited because they can do something. No one wants a bored angel. You know, they're tired of sitting there watching Grey's Anatomy with you, right? No one wants a bored angel. But man, when you begin to speak the mysteries of Christ, they hearken. Because we are the only creation created to receive revelation. The revelation is fresh from God. Angels can't receive revelation. The devil, who is a fallen angel, can't receive revelation. Our dogs can't receive revelation. The trees can't receive revelation. But they all can recognize the Spirit of God when the Spirit of God flows. A child can recognize the Spirit of God. Your daughter walked up during worship and just stood there, literally in line with me. Yeah. I glanced over and she's just standing there just looking around. I guarantee you she was seeing God moving in here. Mm -hmm. Man, I saw the Holy Spirit. I've seen Jesus manifest multiple times. I've never seen the Holy Spirit manifest. And the Holy Spirit flew in here. I walked around and touched each of us. And I was going to lose it again. I, I, I'm in that, I'm, that, I'm in a, a weak and emotional state right now. Like, everything Christ is doing right now today is touching me. I can't get it. But there's a purpose. There's a purpose. Yes. And there's always more. And y'all were created. In a, in a different scripture, it says, the mysteries were created for the saints to reveal. A different translation. The saints. That's you and I. But what's better than being a saint? A bride, probably. Or a son or a daughter. Right? We have greater access. And those are our identities. Christ, Christ really wants us to grab a hold of because he has so much more hidden for those identities of us. We're not double-minded. We're, we're a son and we're a daughter. We're a, we're, a, we're a king and we're a priest. We're a saint and we're a bride. And that's not double-mindedness. Those are our identities. If Christ is the, is the, is the head of, of, of those identities, we're one. And he's all those things. There's over 300 names for God in the Bible alone. I think way over 300. 300 names for God. Each one reveals an aspect of his nature. An aspect, an aspect of his character. And it, I, if you all go through and start researching, what does he call us? There's a lot of things he calls us. We're sheep. We're his children. In, uh, in the Song of Songs, we're his lovers. And he's ready to woo us and show us what we're worth. It was so interesting. I was wondering why that song had the word Cinderella in it. And I'm like, gosh, you know, I love Disney movies and I know they're not great because there's a lot of bad stuff in it. So I'm like, what are you talking about, God? This is Disney. Yeah. This is Disney. God goes, I have something to say. Will you say it? And I have something I want to sing over my bride. Will you sing it? And I said yes. And I'm inviting you all to do the same thing. There's nothing special about me other than my yes. Heaven and earth is being moved right now. Things are realigning in our lives right now. We allow some of us to seek direction. In direction, God is making a way for direction to flow down from the summit to the lower parts. Right now, the valleys are, we're being quenched right now. There are, there are dry places that are coming alive right now. 
God asks, Elijah, can these bones come alive? The answer is yes. Why would he ask that question, right? When God asks you a question, what makes no sense, the answer is yes. Yes. One time we had one member sit here and I was devastated. I was a brand new pastor. It's like, I think we were like four weeks into this, or five weeks into this. I'm like 15 people, 20 people, 30 people, five people, one. So by the end of the night, that person stayed here with us for 11 hours. We ministered to her for 11 hours when she left. She had no idea I was devastated. And I look at Olivia, I was like, what happened? Where was everybody? Two weeks ago, we had 30. God, this is not cool, right? <laughs> you know what God asked? Olivia said, hey, what is God saying about this? And I said, because she felt almost as devastated. And I said, what are you saying about this, God? What are we doing wrong? And God said, does she encounter my love? Obviously, if you ask that question, the answer is yes. And I thought to myself, what does that have to do with it? I'm talking about people here, numbers. And God said, did she encounter my love? And I was like, yes, she did. Where are our people? Yeah. <laughs> and God, and the third time, answered that question with, did she encounter my love? The mysteries of God. Why did God change his message today? Because one of y'all walked in the room. Idiot. You can ask Olivia. I spent all morning yes, yesterday morning combing through scriptures and reading and praying. And then this morning she woke up. How's it going? Almost done. And then during the worship when it started, I started tearing up. I found saw the Holy Spirit walk through the wall and start touching people. And God says, Tell, teach them my mysteries. I said, yeah, I'll teach you all your mysteries in the sermon I prepared. Uh, there will be mysteries within the sermon. And God says, no, no, no. I want you to, to, to read this one scripture and tell them about my mysteries. And tell them they are created to reveal my mysteries. Y'all are created to do that. You have it in you. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is God. So therefore you can translate the mysteries of God to people. The awe and wonder, the power, the love, the tenderness, the still small voice can all flow through you because Christ is in you. And once Christ is in you, he says he's in you, the hope of glory. So you are a disperser of hope and a disperser of glory and goodness and power. And the enemy does not have a chance with just one of us. Fortunately, fortunately for us, we're not alone. We're one. We're one. Man, the Holy Spirit's moving right now. We're just going to let the Holy Spirit minister to us. We'll turn on some music. You want to look at that song? I Can Love You Like That, All For One. We'll play it. I know it's not a Christian song, but we're just going to let God sing us a love song because he so loved hearing us sing him a love song. And as a loving groom, he's wooing us right now. There's a new woo coming to our life right now. He's wooing us right now. As she looks, I'm going to give an offering for salvation. So if you're watching right now, even if you're here, whether you're a Christian who says, hey, I want more, or you're a first-time person, first, this is the first time you heard about the Jesus Christ, the God, that says in, it says in John, uh, uh, it says in John that God is, is love, the God of love, the God who is love, the manifestation of love, 3.16, John 3.16. God is love. So he, for, he so loved this world, he gave his only begotten son. If this is your first time hearing the name Jesus Christ and hearing the mysteries of his love for us, why would a man, why would the son of God die for us? Because he loves you. If you all want more, just say Jesus Jesus. You're my Lord and Savior. You're my Lord and Savior. I repent, I repent for anything that's not aligned with you. Holy Spirit, fill me. Have your way. I am yours. I believe you. You prayed that prayer. If you prayed it for the first time, you and I are family. We're one. Everyone in this room, 
were family. You know that God, God's love for you never lessened before him, before receiving him, and hasn't even increased because his love for you is unconditional. He calls you son, he calls you daughter, he calls you bride. And if you're wondering what the bride of Christ is, let us know, reach out to us. We love to walk you through this life and this journey with Christ. He's changed my life. He ravished my heart. And he renews my mind daily. And he's doing the same for you right now. I'm, pro I'm prophesying that over you right now. There's a renewal of your mind right now. Let God wash over you with his word right now. We thank you. Reach out to us. We're just going to sit in God's glory for a few moment moments and just listen to a song and just let God love us. Well, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. We love you.